Hello, and thank you for joining us for Season 5, Episode 3 of Adventures in Fly Time. And now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. We've got a fly for you today that is, without a doubt, the number one fly for the Flyfish Ohio team. This is a fly, I just can't tie enough of them at the, at the fly tying shows. I'll tie this fly and I'll go through a couple of dozen of them so I know a lot of you folks out there are using it. We've never put this on film before but I've been using this fly now for eight or nine years tied this way. Of course I'm talking about the foxy red clouser. Um, just a really spectacular pattern and I'm going to tell you what, I use a lot of these. Uh, I tie these by the box full because this is, without a doubt, day in and day out, the smallmouth bass fly that I'll use throughout the summertime. And there's a few small variations that we're going to talk about, but the foxy red clouds are very, very easy fly to tie. What's so critical about this particular fly is the fur. Now in the original Bob Clouser version of the Foxy Red Clouser, he suggests and recommends, and the pattern was specified as using, red fox tail. I do something a little bit different. The red fox tail is actually a little bit wiry and a little bit kinky. I like to use the red fox body fur. Let's show you where this fur comes from. When we use the fox fur, we use it a little bit differently. This is a full fox pelt, and this is a great way to buy your material. A couple guys could get together, you could have a lifetime worth of materials. I recommend Coffin Creek Furs, great resource, $25 to about $50 for a pelt, but there's a number of locations. And a lot of fly shops are starting to sell pieces of fox fur, um, particularly for this fly. But here's where it's different. Bob Clouser suggests the tail of the fox. This has got great markings, soft fur, awesome, does a really great job. I love this for larger sizes. I love this for a lot of different kinds of flies, but for the foxy red clouser, this is just a little bit too woolly, a little bit too spiky, and a little bit too stiff to give the action we want. Instead, we use the fox body fur. Now, we start with the belly of the crayfish. Crayfish are, are they're bilateral. They have a, a pink belly, and then they have a darker upper uh, shell. So, we use the much lighter fur from the side and the belly of the animal and that's what we're going to use for the belly or for the bottom part of the bottom wing of the foxy red clouser. In fact you can even use the very light creamy fur that you see right down here on the smaller sizes makes it even more translucent. But this soft pink fur, that's the belly of the foxy red clouser. Then the back, which is much shorter, about half the length, is the dark red that we see right here. Now you can see that that fur is much much softer than the tail fur. You are limited in size because this is only going to tie up to about a size 4, but look at the coloration on that. Beautifully modeled, reddish orange, great uh, coloration to match not only uh, a soft shell crayfish or an immature crayfish, but even some things like um, darters and sculpins and a lot of other critters that are out there. So this is a fabulous resource and for just a few dollars you can really have a lifetime's worth of supply. Let's go ahead and tie the fly. We've mounted the 33903 kink shank popper hook in the vise, and the first thing I want to do is lay down a thread base using this rusty brown Danville thread. Lay that right through both of the kinks and onto the flat spot, stopping that base right at the point of the hook. You don't need to go any farther back than that. The entire fly is going to be tied in that section right there. Set the eyes into the front kink in the shank bind them down. I typically use four or five twists going from the back left to the front right, come across, and then four or five twists going from the front left to the back right. Then, when I've got that done, I'll make a wrap that goes underneath the eyes and over the shank of the hook. That tightens up those wraps and locks that set of lead eyes in place so they really don't spin. They're not going anywhere. Now, the, the belly of this fly is that cream fur that we showed you. So I'm going to take a snip of that and what I do with that, very important with the belly of this fly, is I'm going to remove a lot of that soft under fur. Now if you want, if you didn't buy an entire fox pelt, but if you only bought a piece of fox, and by the way, we're probably going to be providing foxy red tying kits uh, on Flyfish Ohio here over the course of the summer, so we'll be able to provide you with some of these harder to get materials, but you can save that under fur, that's great dubbing great dubbing for Hendrickson um, uh, mayflies and for nymphs. Once I've got most of that thicker fur out, go ahead and check the length of that, clip off a square end, 
and just a, lo a loose pinch wrap will hold that in place. Two or three wraps will hold that in place. Allow that to set up on top like that and then move your thread back to the back side of it. I like to push that material forward to add just a little bit of slack to that because you don't want the fur being cut by the fish's rough teeth. Make five or six wraps for a waist and what I like to do is throw a quick three turn whip finish on that. You don't really have to put any head cement on that. It's not necessary on this fly. I've yet to have one um, that's fallen apart from uh, taking too many fish. You're more likely to lose it in the rocks if you're fishing this one properly because this is a spectacular imitation of a soft shell crayfish as well as a Johnny Darter. Go ahead and invert your hook. If you have a rotating vise, if you have a true rotary vise, just do that. Now, one piece and one piece only of flash. What I'm going to do on a size 6, on a size 8 or 10, I would use a half a piece. I'm going to loop that over, so that's half and half, so that gives me two pieces. Loop that over again, that gives me four pieces. Then I take that flash, loop it over the thread, that gives me eight pieces of flash. That's all you need for a size 6. Tie that in and you can see that the length makes that flash come out just beyond the belly fur that we've put in place. Now we're ready to use the darker fur that we showed you and tie in the back of the fly. When I cut this, I'm going to cut a good size piece, about the thickness of a pencil. You can see how much I have there. Now, here's the trick. This is going to be shorter than the belly. I want the end of this fur to go just beyond the bend of the hook, and I do not want to remove all of that soft under fur. Yes, it will mat. Yes, it's very thick, but that's what gives this fly its boxy shape that allows it to imitate a soft shell crayfish and really gives it its bulk at the front. That's the trick. When I said earlier that Bob Clouser specifies using the fox tail and that I thought that this was a better way to tie the flies because this is a much softer material and it's also much more translucent and that under fur gives me that nice thick head. Now, with this particular fly, because I've cut a blunt cut on that, I'm going to have to use a lot of thread to create kind of a big bullet shaped head. That's okay. On this particular fly, not a problem. You don't have to worry about a small head. In fact, if anything, you've got a little bit better a fly if you use a larger head on this fly. Nice big bullet shaped head. When I've got it to the appropriate proportion, go ahead and throw my whip finish on there. In this case, I'm just going to use a six turn whip finish. Or if you mess it up, you can use two whip finishes. Very, very simple fly to tie. Clip your excess thread, a little bit of Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Now it is kind of important on this particular fly, you hold that material back. Doesn't matter if you get a little in there because that is going to lock it in, but I don't want to lose the stiffness by having that fox fur wick, uh, wick all that um, head cement up. Now what you're going to see the top wing, very full, very fluffy, very thick, a little bit shorter than the bottom wing, the flash a little bit longer than the entire thing. When that's in the water, that's going to turn a translucent gray with orange undertones. Great imitation of a Johnny Darter, great imitation of a soft shell crayfish, of a female crayfish. This pattern drives smallmouth utterly bonkers, totally crazy. This is the fly you need to carry with you if you're going smallmouth bass fishing anywhere in the Midwest, whether it's Minnesota or Ohio, Kentucky or Indiana, California, or if you're going for some of the riverine uh, fish down in, in Texas, this is the fly. This is the one I'm never without. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next month. Tight lines.